Bernstein, come back here. Don't be unbearable. All right, episode two, training for UTMB 2022. Uh, Tune-up races. Tune-up races are things that I've kind of, uh, I don't want to say frowned upon, but it's something that I wouldn't necessarily always be like, oh, you know, I got B races and A races. But when you have a big end goal, a big long ultra, especially over 100 miles, 170K UTMB being the main focus of the year, uh, you kind of look at races in the summer, mountain races that build up to that in the context of the training plan. And those races are generally going to be shorter. Uh, you're not going to do a 200 mile race to prepare for your 100 mile race. Well, maybe you will. But, uh, you know, generally over my career, every race has been an A race. You know, it's I, I bring it to the table. Like if I'm pinning on a bib, I go pretty much 100 percent, or at least I try to. I don't do, uh, you know, if I'm training for a marathon, I don't run a half marathon race at uh, sub maximal effort before that marathon, I go all out. I usually don't even race half marathons before marathons, but you could in a, a training plan. And as you prepare for an ultra, looking at the context of this year, of course I did do the Canyons 100K, that was a big focus and an FKT effort before that in Hawaii. Uh, you have to pace yourself because uh, UTMB, it's, it's very draining, it's a long race. And I want to do these shorter mountain races first. So, but I don't want to take them too seriously because I think the big thing is focusing on the training for UTMB and getting in the consistent high mileage, the consistent vertical gain, climbing up and down, as well as time on feet. And uh, yeah, just trying to get up and down steep slopes, get in the trekking pole action. So what I did do is I raced. I raced. I traveled uh, to California this past weekend, part of the Broken Arrow Sky Running race series and it was kind of a fun trip i got to hang out with a lot of the spring energy crew uh sponsor of the race but also meet a lot of uh, cool people and interact with people and do this iron face challenge which was one of the races at broken arrow and it was the first time they've done this event it's a really unique event <clears throat> it was a short race though it was only six miles about 10 kilometers and I think 2,000 feet of climbing, but the idea is that you run up uh, about two miles or 3K, uh, and we'll run some B-roll here of the actual race, and then you, you get onto a Via Ferretta, a climbing cable, um, and you climb for like 800 meters or half mile, it seemed like it was a lot longer than that, and then you run about 5K or three miles down on some of the trails that the Broken Arrow Sky Race series, uh, which they do a great job out there, finish on so it's a very short race it, it took a little over an hour and it was like a high lactate threshold effort but uh, Max King showed up and also Adrian Ballinger and uh, um, some other people I think Olympic climbers actually and I jumped into it and I wanted to have fun and it was a unique experience because I always wanted to go on this Via Freda outside of Palisades Tahoe it's uh, on the start of the Western States 100 course and uh, yeah you're up on the ski slopes so it was a staggered start, so Max King, uh, we let go first. Well, he was ranked first. I mean, you're dealing with Max, you're talking about a world mountain running champion at short distance, uh, obstacle course uh, race world champion, I think Tough Mudder, one of those. And, you know, 8, 830 steeple, 3K steeple chase, as well as a phenomenal any service, any distance runner, big inspiration to me. But, you know, he's, he's over 40 now, but he's still, he hasn't slowed down much. And I was like, well, Max is going to put time on me in probably all these sections, right? Uh, he, I think he put about 40 seconds on me on the climb, but uh, he definitely put a lot of time on the climbing. And then he's a world-class downhill runner, technical or, or road, which there's a mix of both. So Max goes off first. He's way ahead. He's banking time. You could see Max start off there. Uh, I let the second place guy, Adrian Ballinger, who's a total badass alpinist, uh, ski mountaineer. He just, uh, he's, I asked him if he's climbed Everest. He's like, I've, cl I've summited Everest eight times once without oxygen. He just came back from uh, skiing Makalu, I believe, the fifth tallest mountain in the world, the only person in the world to ski it. Uh, he's super experienced and I let him go ahead of me because not because I thought he could outrun me, but because he could outclimb me like crazy. He's actually a guide, I think part of Alpenglow Expeditions. He guides people on this specific Via Freda, and there are different routes, 
but I think he knew it like the back of his hand and he was going through the clips really fast. So I let him go uh, and you could see him start there. And then uh, it was my turn. Uh, so three minutes behind and you know, they take your total time, including all the transitions, including the climbing, including the running section. So, you know, you have to be fast with that. And I'm asking Max how to put a harness on because basically you start off there. You can see me running, uh, probably starting a little too fast. You're running up the hill. That was natural. That was good for me. You get up to the base of the Via Freda, you have to then put on a harness, a harness and climbing helmet. And I had my own climbing helmet and uh, Insta 360, of course, kind of messing around filming. So was Max. And it was really cool because you, you strap in and you're on this cable. It's a single clip via Freda, uh, but the, the, you're always attached to this cable. So you don't have to worry about falling too far. It'll, it'll catch you, but you still have to coordinate and pass uh, your loop through the little uh, rivets or the, the support cables in the rocks. Um, so I got caught up there quite a bit and I'm, I'm not used to putting on the harness uh, or climbing for that matter. I've done some class three scrambling and uh, mountain stuff, but this was near vertical. Now, of course there were rat, uh, ladder rungs. You could see the, the footage there, but you're high above Tahoe, uh, Palisades Tahoe, high above the ski slopes in the start area and just awesome views. I know Max and, and Adrian are just banking time on me on this climbing section. I'm worried about the Olympic climbers behind me, um, but you know we transition finally off of that, and you can see uh, some of the Insta360 shots there running down the hill. And uh, yeah, Max ended up winning, but I kind of twisted my ankle a little bit on that downhill. Uh, it's okay, but you know there's a little black and blue, a little sore still. A week later now, uh, I think I'll be okay, but I had to dial things back. Uh, and then Adrian uh, Ballinger ended up third. Uh, so you can see us on the podium there. Uh, really cool event and really cool to take part and see some of the more deep and competitive races, of course, in the 52K and the 26K, and they even had a, a vertical K, which is rare in the US. So really world-class performances and, and a mountain running festival, basically, in Palisades Tahoe. There's part of the Broken Arrow Sky Race and something I was really glad I got to travel out there uh, to take part in and to participate. So that's the footage from that. So yeah, after that, I was kind of icing my ankle because it, it was uh, quite sore. It's still a little sore on the downhills, kind of had to dial back my week uh, for the rest of that training. And of course with the travel, it's all part in the buildup though of uh, for UTMB and getting in the mountains, having fun is a, is a big key of this season for me, but also mixing it up. And it was a good, you know, 60 minute lactate threshold type of effort. I have my heart rate on, you can see the data on Strava as well. Uh, but now we'll transition outside. Uh, enough of this boring talk in here and see what is next in my tune-up race. Uh, the one I'm gonna do before UTMB. Wow, so back in Colorado now, actually on the Colorado Trail, pretty close to Salida. Got the poles out, trying to train to the poles a lot uh, this summer because I'm going to use them at UTMB. And yeah, just uh, gearing up for the next tune-up race. Tune-up race again. You know, I say that lightly because I take these races seriously. I race hard. Uh, and yeah, it's not a B race, so to speak, but it's not my number one year goal, which of course is UTMB. So uh, it's part of the buildup for that. And it's part of getting in a really hard long run training effort. So I won't do a full taper. It's not hundred percent taper. And hopefully because my next event, which will be, and again, if I pronounce this wrong, please correct my pronunciation. It's either Verbier, Verber, Verbier Marathon uh, out in Switzerland. I want to go out to the Alps, uh, run this race. I'm entered in the, it's a UTMB series race, but I'm entered in the 44 kilometers, I believe. 4,000 meters of climbing though. So that's like 13,000 feet roughly. Uh, a lot of climbing, great hard long run effort in the Alps. So probably steeper than UTMB even, but good trekking pole, gear dialing exercise, and something hopefully I could recover from quickly so that I could stay over there and train quite a bit on the UTMB course, because I think that's most specific actually. So please correct my pronunciation. Let me know if you're gonna be there. Maybe I'll bring some higher running hats, do a meet and greet, shake out run, UTMB series race, of course. Hoka is a sponsor, so that certainly helps, but you know, it's hard to find a race in the summer this late that's not already booked up in full. And so gracious for that uh, to be able to travel and hopefully do this as I build up. And like I said, the training weeks, the vertical, using the poles, dialing your hydration, 
and uh, gear really matters because I think at UTMB like a lot of it's gear management it's not having your muscles fall apart on all the uphills and downhills it's not a very technical track um, but it's steep it's a lot of climbing going all night you can't get hypothermic if it's cold and rainy or snowy during the day you can't overheat get really hot get dehydrated or run out of fuel but then your leg muscles and your stomach and back have to hold up so my breathing you know maybe it's not 100 percent maybe my vo2 max dropped five or ten points but i don't think that's the limiting factor in long ultra long 100 mile distance mountain ultra races right because all those other things are really critical and important and so something i could hopefully improve upon a lot so that's really the goal oh this part's getting really flat and boring another thing you know being in colorado it's kind of a double-edged sword with high altitude training like we have the mountains but i'm almost too high of an elevation right now like you get up to like 10,000 feet, 3,000 meters, 14,000 feet. It's really hard to move the legs fast and even run. So you can't get that muscle tension or that speed, that leg turnover up uh, that you could at say 4,000 feet like Chamonix is. Uh, so, you know, going down lower could be more advantageous actually. Uh, and we don't, our trails in Colorado, especially out in the middle of the state here, are generally pretty technical. You don't get that steep downhill pounding unless you're like on a ski slope, which I can't access, but again, the high altitude. So, you know, I don't know how Courtney DeWalter did it, but I think uh, training in Europe, training on the steep mountain trails more like UTMB is more advantageous than always trying to be up here super high in uh, Colorado. It's, it is advantageous though for the altitude, of course, but for my lungs recovering from the pulmonary embolism, I'm not sure if it's actually been the best thing. I think more oxygen or a higher oxygen saturation rich environment maybe could have been better. So mixing it up, getting in that variety, but really looking forward to going out to Switzerland and France and Italy for that matter in the Verbier, 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 please correct me. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce anything. Marathon race and uh, yeah, hope to see you out there. Thanks so much for following along. Really appreciate it, keeping up with this series. Uh, Patreon supporters for making this YouTube channel possible. And uh, of course, shout out to title sponsor, Hoka, and uh, Camelback, Coros, Spring Energy, to name a few, Roka, Strava, uh, Compressed Sport, Drymax, Squirrels Nut Butter, Athlete Blood Test. Okay, uh, hashtag sponsored. But uh, yeah, look at these views. Hope you're doing well. Thanks so much for all your support. Check out our training plans at higherrunning.com. It helps uh, Coach Sandy and I out a lot. Check out her channel, Running Wild. Thank you again, guys. Keep uh, pushing hard, keep persevering. Hope to see you out there on the mountain trails. Time to fly.